And I have so many questions for you, and I'm so thankful uh, for your work, but quite possibly the most important question, uh, what's your coffee order? <laughs> My coffee order. I am one of the three teachers in New South Wales who doesn't drink coffee. So I, I can take a hot chocolate and we'd be very happy with that. It's pretty amusing. We've got um, student baristas at our school at Traybrook Technology High School who work every morning. They're just they're fabulous. And I always feel like I'm shortchanging them when I turn up embarrassingly saying, can, can I have a hot chocolate, not a real drink? Uh, but yes, I'll, I'll take one of those if you're offering. <laughs> Right, so are you trying to tell me that this is natural energy that you have, it's not caffeine related? Um, yeah, well I mean, I drink a single cup of tea in the morning. If I have one after one o'clock, I'm in some serious trouble when I, when I hop into bed. Um, but yeah, I don't know, That's, uh, this is me, un, un coffee, uh, you know, amplified. Fantastic. Um, another rapid fire question, what's an item that is still on your bucket list? Oh, still on my bucket list, see the Grand Canyon. Uh, I know this is a funny thing to like single out. I'm, a, I'm not very well traveled. Uh, in fact, prior to the Australian of the Year Awards, which kind of gave me a lot of opportunities to travel, um, I hadn't had a, a, what's the right word? Legitimate, active um, passport for like over 10 years. So having gone many places throughout my life, was gonna go to the US in 2020 because um, my, my book that I wrote uh, in 2018, it got picked up by a US publisher, which is delightful. So I was going to go over there and talk about that. And then a global pandemic happened. So still haven't even gone to the US, but the Grand Canyon, I just have wanted to see it my entire life. There's one thing I just can't let go. And that is, um, the other day I was watching Play School and my children were watching Play School and up popped Eddie Wu. How on earth <laughs> did you go from a, um, a high school maths teacher to a YouTube sensation, and also, most importantly, someone who's starring on Play School. Uh, so you know, <laughs> there are, um, I mean, there are questions that I get posed that I myself do not know the answer to. And I have to say, when I was first approached, um, I looked at it and I had to double take. I was kind of like, is this one of those phishing scams? Like someone's trying to get my credit card details? Like this can't be real. Like this is yeah. surely a, a, a fake, you know? And then when I replied back and they said, hey, we're actually, I thought this is amazing. We're doing a series on marvelous maths and your name kind of came up as someone would be interested in. I thought, okay, I don't have an amazing singing voice. I am pretty sure if there was a way to fail dancing at school, I would have done it, but I'm gonna give it a red hot go because it's play school. So it was a privilege to be part of it. Um, and to your credit, last night, my, uh, my four-year-old decided to uh, sort her socks. Um, <laughs> So that was really helpful as we were uh, trying to fold our washing. So thank you so much for that. Um, if you could do another episode on, say, tidying up, putting your washing <laughs> away on Facebook, that would be incredibly helpful. But it, it's it's just so amazing, isn't it? And, and the fact that you um, had the opportunity to um, to talk about maths in such a practical way is is really really inspiring. And, and what do you think it is that that people maybe misunderstand about maths? Or what would you what message would you like to get out uh, to people who Maybe, not, maybe didn't have such a great experience. That's hmm. a huge question. Yeah, oh, it's massive. And I know, you know, for me, I think the first word that comes to my mind is, is empathy because I did not have a great experience of maths myself going through school. I mean, it wasn't terrible. I've, you know, encountered many people throughout my journeys uh, over the last few years in particular who have literally had traumatic experiences of mathematics. So mine was not quite that bad, but I certainly remember, and maybe this is something which, you know, people who are listening might resonate with. I remember feeling really, really dumb in my maths classes and just having no idea and not just not having any idea, but feeling bad because I was supposed to have an idea and like, what's wrong with you? Like you're um, meant to be someone who's intelligent and understands things and you are confused. You don't know what to do. So my first word to, to anyone out there who's feeling like that is, I am right there. I know what that experience is like. And, and there is this hope. There's a way to move past that. I'm kind of, you know, exhibit A as it were. In terms of a message, something that I'd want to say to anyone who feels like they, they had that experience or is, is having that experience right now, I'd say give it some time because mathematics, it's found everywhere and it's for everyone. You know, whatever kind of interest you have, there's a connection that mathematics has to that. And if you can appreciate the mathematics that's within it and that's connected to it, I think whether it's 
music or cooking or sport or Shakespeare, whatever it happens to be, I think appreciating the mathematics that's in it will help you love that thing that you already love even better. And as a consequence, since it's found everywhere, I, I truly think it's for everyone. I know there's some people who are gifted and talented in mathematics. I was, am, was not and am not one of those, but there's a place for all of us uh, in, in mathematics in much the same way that there's a place for all of us in, in music or in food or in literature. So I think that would be my message. That's really wonderful. And um, just before we hit record, uh, we were talking about a, uh, a mutual uh, inspiration, I think, uh, Dr. Catherine uh, Attard, and I just remember sitting in one of the lecturers at the University of Western Sydney uh, many, many years ago before I started teaching, and I just remember sitting there in her classes and just realising how incredibly diverse and wonderful and creative this subject was, and to be honest, I felt a little bit ripped off, because mm. I thought, where was this where was this maths when I was at school? Mm. Where was this passion and this excitement? And I think we we went outside and we were drawing um, 2D and 3D shapes in the environment. Like something so, something like I walk past these wonderful structures every day, these mm. cubes, these hexagons, these spheres, and I had no idea that maths was embedded in every single component of our lives. And I'm just wondering from your point of view, do you think maths has a bit of a PR problem? And is that one of your missions in life to help us begin to see ourselves as mathematicians again, or even for the first time? Mathematics has such an issue with its own image. Uh, one of the things which I've come to realize is, you know, when you are a mathematics teacher and you meet someone for the first time, whether it's at a wedding party or you, you jump into a taxi or you're just standing in a lift, you start a conversation with someone and as soon as they find out I'm a mathematics teacher, one of two things will happen. Either that's the end of the conversation. It's just like, okay, I have no interest in interacting with you anymore. Um, or um, the other, like vast majority of times, people will often relate to me, their, their negative experiences, their frustrations, um, and they'll <laughs> hold me personally responsible. They're like, you math teachers, you are the reason why. And you know, if, if it's just a short conversation, I often will just sort of extend some sympathy. But if I've got some time, I often try to, to dig into, well, t tell me what it was that was so difficult or so negative for you in this experience. And to an individual, I think pretty much every time, and I've had a lot of these conversations over the years, I find that there are very, very few people who dislike numbers themselves or shapes themselves or, or patterns. The thing that people have um, so much trouble with is not the mathematics, but the way they learned the mathematics. And I think any subject can be made dry and boring and frustrating. And it is heartbreaking to me that mathematics, the vast majority of people have that experience. But that does mean, you know, often the way to help people fall in love with maths is to help them see maths as it truly is, to fix that PR problem, like you said. Yeah. I, I think that's so important. And, and, and my job as a teacher, um, I think is, um, Sorry, I'll rephrase that. I think quite often we have to um, unlearn things as adults. And I think about that, all these perceptions of maybe I'm not a great dancer or I'm not great at music or I'm not great at mathematics. And that's actually, um, that has come from somewhere. And I think as individuals, we carry in many ways these, uh, these, different, these different bags that can hold us down and restrict us. And it's so wonderful. Um, uh, one of the things that I'm so passionate about in my class is seeing young people experience the beauty and the wonder of maths. So I was doing a lesson with them uh, the other day on uh, Piet Mondrian, who's an artist, and he, he uses these wonderful primary colours. And and um, my um, one of my students said, "Oh, Mr. Green, this this can't be maths. This is too fun." And part of me was really excited that they didn't realise it, and also part of me was really sad that they thought maths had to be boring. <laughs> and confined to a, a key learning area. And it was so lovely to see them manipulating these two-dimensional shapes and making these incredible patterns and designs. And, mm. um, and so I think it's um, hopefully, and, and thank you to people like yourself, that are really starting to change that narrative mm. around the possibilities of maths. And um, I, I'm just curious, Eddie, um, was there a teacher that made a big difference in your life at school? Was there one that really made you... I mean, we all have a story of a great mm. teacher, whether the teachers or not, but was there a teacher that really um, stands out to you as, uh, as making a difference in your life? Yeah, I think I've, I'm very fortunate that I can point to a vast array 
of teachers who had exactly the kind of impact on me that you describe and uh, every single one of them is a big component for why I am a teacher today. Um, I've in the past I've talked about um, two people in particular who've stood out to me who were Mr. Brown my agriculture teacher and Mr. Best my music teacher. Um, I've spoken about them before particularly they had impact on me in terms of how they were not just they, they embodied the idea that teachers teach a subject but they more importantly teach students and that the human beings in front of them they regarded as not just you know a blank slate on which to you know spew forth their knowledge but they viewed us as people, fellow human beings uh, who they got the privilege of, of learning from. So I've, I've spoken about them, but someone I actually haven't gotten to talk about very much was um, Mrs. Ballantyne, who was my drama teacher in years wow. 9 and 10. Uh, wow. Now, Mrs. Ballantyne, I, I want to speak a little bit at length about her because, like I said, I haven't talked about her a lot in the past. And for me, who I am now and the kind of teacher I am is so deeply um, shaped by my years in drama. I actually studied four years of drama during high school because like elective in 9 and 10 and then I took it for my HSC in years 11 and 12. And you can argue, you can make a pretty strong argument that number one, I would not have gone on to, you know, take drama seriously enough that I would, you know, do it for my year 11 and 12 senior study if I hadn't have landed in years 9 and 10 have been firstly objectively an awful drama student like I had friends who went on to become stage actors they went to um, the National Institute of Dramatic Arts they're like you know serious dramatic theatre people um, and I was not one of those I you know enjoyed the subject but I wasn't ex I didn't excel at it but that didn't matter to Mrs. Ballantyne she saw in me something worth nurturing and it, it made me realize wow okay I can actually take this on as a skill which yeah, I'm not naturally gifted at but I, I can take this further and in fact if you want to pick out one of the things like you know how the, the question that kids ask all the time is like when are we going to use this sir like when is this going to matter in our everyday lives and that kind of thing and as a math teacher I just get asked that a lot I use the skills that I learned in drama about communicating interacting with people I literally use them every hour of every day of my life so oh. Mrs. Ballantyne, I have a big debt of gratitude for um, out there uh, over the years. And have you, uh, have you ever caught up with her after uh, graduating her class? Have you expressed this to her, the role that she's played in your life? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, the short answer is yes. Um, I had the, depending on the way you look at it, the good fortune or the misfortune of actually going back to my old school to teach for a few years um, early in my career. And that was a delightful experience. It was also really weird trying to call my old teachers by their first names and so on. Um, and I, do, I did have conversations with, with her to say, hey, look, I'm, I'm so grateful. I don't know if I was articulate enough. I'm, um, even though a lot of people are surprised to hear this, I'm, a, I'm kind of a textbook introvert. So I find like personal interaction really exhausting and I find it easy to put my, my foot in my mouth like why did I say that like and I'll think about this for hours and days later. Um, so I probably was not that uh, yeah, articulate in the way that I expressed it maybe to her but I hope she knows how grateful I am.